I'd like to welcome Richard Mosley from Bayer, who's going to be talking about Harmonex rodent pace today, uh, a new era for rodent control. So uh, good morning. It is still morning, isn't it, Richard? <laughs> it is still morning. Yeah, good morning, everybody. It is. Thank you. Right. If I share my screen, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Yep, it's up. Great. Excellent. So good morning, everybody. Um, really nice to be with you here today. Really pleased to be able to come and um, discuss, which is a, was a really, really interesting development from Bayer going forward for professional pest controllers from a, a rodent side point of view in a way that we uh, we start to manage infestations in the way that we we perhaps open up our options a little bit more to the to, to the areas we treat and the areas that we manage with our professional pest control products. So my name is Richard Mosley. I'm technical manager for the professional pest control product range at Bayer, and I'm just going to spend the you know a few moments with you just 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 introducing to our, our new product that will be available soon. It's um, we're, we're hoping to have it in the next few weeks available for the professional pest control market. And this product itself sits within our Harmonix range. So just to, that might sound like a bit of a, a, a strange term or phrase, Harmonix, if you've not come across it before, but it is a brand name from Bayer and it tends to encompass our, uh, our products that, that don't necessarily sit within conventional chemistry from a, from a product point of view. So um, you know, th there's innovation in this product from really from start to finish. So. Uh, and, and you know that's indicated in the in the slightly different name that you might not be ex you might not be used to from a, a, a Bayer product. So just thinking about the 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 challenges that that we all have as professional pest controllers before we necessarily go in and talk about you know what 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 the product is itself. Then you know I, I'm sure that none of these challenges are new to any of us when we're working in in, in the field as professional pest controllers on a on a daily basis. So we know that a lot of the rodent infestations that, that we deal with are complex. They are difficult to work with, you know, they are challenging. And then we also know that we have an environmental risk that we, we have to manage and we have to measure and we have to be able to show that we're working with all of the associated risks effectively whenever we, we go out there and we do any, any treatment or inspection from a pest control point of view. And then we have to make sure, and we want to always make sure that you know that the, the performance of the treatment um, and its success is is, is ultimately a hundred percent. But we do know that sometimes our products have capabilities and restrictions regarding usage areas, that kind of thing. So we always have to bear that in mind. We always have to adhere to the label, and we're always the first people to to remind you of that. So you know, we know that in some places, in some situations, in some locations then the restrictions on the label sometimes make the challenges even bigger than they already are when it comes to, to controlling target pest species. So what we have in these challenging conditions is, is the need to find the right control program and the right, the right methods and the right application processes to make sure that, that we really start to, to, to deal with these challenging infestations. And you know, from it, whether it's an environmental point of view, whether it's a disease spreading point of view, or any of these challenges that we face, but you know, we start to really you know, get, in, get into the, the, the deep eradication of the target species that, that we're dealing with. So those challenges, are, you know, uh, 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 we all know about them as professional pest controllers, whether it's resistance, and we're dealing with that more and more. And if we, you know, look at the, the data that's available from the likes of ARAG, Rodenside Resistance Action Group, then we know that, you know, with the information that we have that, 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 are, that it's spreading, um, we have the environmental pressures of where and when we use our rodenticides. And then we have the regulatory pressures about, you know, how, where we can, when we can apply. In some cases, that means that we're coming, becoming quite limited in products that we have available to us. And when we do still, do still have those products available to us, then we might see more and more restrictions going forward about how we use those particular products, be those identicides, be those insecticides. You know, we, we, we're seeing those restrictions across, uh, across the board as professional pest controllers. So, you know, we've got the potential that we've got declining the effectiveness of the products that we're using, not necessarily because of the products, because, we're, because of where we can use them. And of course, what that means is that we have to look at different methods, different actions, different, different treatment processes. Then that can have an impact on how often we have to actually visit the site 
And when we're going to the site more often than we necessarily would previously, then you know, we have a, a potential impact on profits or we charge more for the services that we use. So there's a number of challenges that, you know, none of them are easy to, to overcome, but there are a number of complex challenges around every one of us that goes out and does pest control on a regular basis. And at that point is where we introduce our new side, which is Harmonix Rodent Pest. And we believe that in a number of situations, in a number of locations, then what this rodenticide will do, and I'll go into more detail of, of, of the product itself in a second, but we really feel that what we'll be able to do with this product is, is improve our performance in a number of areas that we've, where we've not necessarily been able to use certain products before. And because of the, uh, of the bait matrix and the innovation within this product, then potentially use less product going forward as when we're doing a typical rodent monitoring or baiting process. And because of the innovation that sits within this product and around this product range, um, we do become more responsible. And, and, and when we talk about more responsible, we talk about the innovation and responsibleness from an environmental point of view from, from, from the very start of the process. And, that, and that's the packaging. And even, even the packaging shows a, you know, a, a, a different environmental slant than we've had before and a, a development that, that, that shows that you know, for, for you as pest controllers to your end user customers, a commitment if, if they have strong environmental policies around things like the products that you're using, but also packaging, those kinds of things, then this product slots really, really nicely into those kind of, uh, of, of concerns that are put in place quite generally by your, by your customers, the end users of, of professional pest control services. So what we have when we introduce this new product is for us as pest managers, then we have a, you know, a, a more sustainable option for the control of the target rodents that, that we're working with and a dependable product that can be used in multiple situations. And interestingly, you'll see the tab there that's called Dynamic Integrated Pest Management, Dynamic IPM. And some of you may be aware that there is already a Harmonix rodent paste product out there, but it's a non-toxic product. Um, it's a monitoring tool that works very, very well. It is designed to, to, to integrate seamlessly and effortlessly with a treatment program using the toxic rodenticide. So it means that can, we can be far more proactive in the way that we use our products. And we can also have a, a monitoring tool that's almost identical to the rodenticide, the toxic rodenticide that we introduce as and when we have a rodent problem. So we, you know, it, it's not just integrated pest management, we're far more dynamic in the way that we start to plan and, and, and organize our, our treatments against pests. So this is our new product, it's Harmonix Rodent Paste. Um, we'll go into a bit more detail about you know, the, the, the active ingredients and whatnot shortly, but it is a result of a, a number of years of, of, of innovation and development from Bayer. And the active ingredients of this product is cholecalciferol. So that's interesting and that's important because it's not an anticoagulant. So it's a completely different mode of action. So, you know, for those of us that have, that have had issues or concerns about resistance to certain active ingredients uh, in, with, with anticoagulants in the past, then that's certainly something that we would never expect to see with this particular product because of the way that it, it, it actually it controls the target species, the target rodent. And as I say, we've got innovation that runs from start to finish with this product, whether it's the bait matrix or an incredibly palatable bait matrix, a matrix that it shares with its, its sister product, the non-toxic product. But also, again, with the packaging itself, you'll notice there that that's not a tub. It's not a plastic tub anymore. It is a, it is a plastic sack, it, and that is completely different. We've not seen that in the UK before. But from a development point of view and an environmental point of view, then the plastic loading, the packaging that's required for this particular packaging is 80% less than the standard packaging that we would have used before. So you know, we, the innovation starts not just with the bait matrix and not just with the application. The innovation starts with everything from, from the, the, the packaging itself, making sure that that has a, an environmental friendly aspect to it. And it's a more professional product in that respect. So this is a, is a heavy duty sack. It has handles. It can be used. It can be carried. It doesn't need to be transferred or into another container. It is perfectly suitable for use on a site as, an, as, as the packaging to carry this particular end side around the site. So one of the really thing, interesting things about this product is, as well as this, the different uh, mode of action, which we'll, you know, we'll talk about and touch on later, is 
it's the areas that we can start to use this particular product. Um, this is interesting, and, and, and this is slightly different from what we've seen on, on, on Red Dead sides going forward for, for a number of years, and certainly Red Dead sides that, 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 that sit within the Bayer portfolio. So there are some standard phrases there that you'll be quite comfortable with and you'll understand and you'll see those pretty regularly on the labels of the identicides that, that you use on a, on a, on a very regular basis. Um, so indoors, around buildings, uh, within road and stations. So covered and protected locations, that's something that, that, that's slightly, you know, a bit of a going, going back in time. We don't necessarily see that on, on a lot of labels that we see at this moment in time. So we're already we start to see the, the there's a level of perhaps flexibility with this product from an application point of view that we've not necessarily seen for a while, certainly not on a Bay label product. But going forward, we've also got some additional areas that will be on the label of this product that are quite important and are quite useful. Uh, and certainly from a professional pest control point of view about taking the actual bait to the target species and especially when we're talking about rat activity, brown rat activity, where are they? And having as much impact on, on, on the rodents infestation at source, if it's away from a building or if it's in an open area or a waste dump, then this product starts to give us a level of flexibility that we've perhaps not seen for a while. And also with burrow baiting on the, um, you know, following all the right requirements and following the crew code as it has a very good document on, on burrow baiting, then we can see that, you know, for those of us who, who've done pest control for some time and, you know, really realise the, the benefit of taking the bait directly to the target species you know, and, and avoiding those areas where they might be able to feed in, in between, um, you know, getting close to buildings and whatnot. So the, the flexibility with this product is very, very good and it allows us to, really go and take the product to the target species and you know there's, there's some nice aspects of some flexibility within that label that we believe will be really useful for professional pest controllers especially those that are working in areas where they think that they may have resistance cholecalciferol as a vitamin it, 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 it does not, there is no resistance to this product so and so if you have if you do think you're dealing with some level of, of anticoagulant resistance then this is a useful resistant management tool that can be brought into your into your pest control arsenal to start to allow you to give a level of control in in in, in certain areas so one of the benefits of of, of cholecalciferol as an active ingredient um, is that it has a stop feeding effect as well. So that's important for, for professional pest controllers because it means that we don't necessarily have to use as much rodenticide to control an infestation as we necessarily would in, because we, we know that when the rodent has consumed uh, the amount that it, the lethal dose that it needs to, to control it, then after 24, 48 hours, then that stop feeding effect will kick in and we'll start to see the, the rodent stop feeding. So it won't be consuming continually throughout the treatment period. So that means survey is important, that we need to make sure that we've got a, a good level of rodenticide in place for the initial treatment to make sure that you know, we, 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 we've covered the area and we're, we're assured that we've got you know, full coverage and full knowledge of, of, of the rodent infestation, just as you would do with any treatment, to be perfectly honest. But it does mean that we, we, we have some flexibility here where we start to perhaps reduce the amount of, of, of product that we need. You know, initially we need to do a good survey and get a good level of product in place. But what we start to see is that after 24 or 48 hours, when the stop feeding effect kicks in, then it will have a dramatic reduction on uh, influence on, on the rodent's behavior and start to reduce things like you know, gnawing, chewing, those kind of things. They become more lactidaceous and they won't necessarily be going out. So what we can start to do with this product is minimize the amount of active ingredients that's necessarily entering the environment because we know that we'll, the, the stop feeding effect will reduce the amount of rodenticide that's going to enter the rodent's body. And the rodents, as, they, as their appetite stops and as they become lethargic and stop going out for searching for food, then that may have an effect on the other damage that rodents can cause. You know, it might, might prevent them the, the gnawing, the chewing, the, those other aspects and the contamination that you associate with rodent activity. Then that stop feeding effect, it, it may help and support with that because it's, it, you know, the rodents will, will become um, lackadaisical and won't necessarily be going out to search for food. 
And if we can reduce the movement of rodents, if we can reduce the, act, the access that rodents have during the treatment period, then of course that's important because the less they move, then the more control we have over the spread of disease, that kind of thing. And we reduce those issues that we associate with rodents having easy movement and, and easy access around sites and, and, and the disease potential that that brings. So the stock feeding effect, uh, it's due to the mode of action that we associate with cholecalciferol, and that is hypercalcemia. So the way that this product, it means hypercalcemia means that there's an overdose of calcium within, within the rodent's body. Um, cholecalciferol uh, encourages the, the release of calcium into the rodent's body. Uh, from the bones, that kind of thing. And, you know, calcium within, um, you know, calcium within the rodent's body or anybody's body is, is an important vitamin, it's an important um, aspect. And, and any slight deviations in, 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 in the level of, 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 of calcium in, in, in any mammal's body uh, can be quite detrimental. So and then we start to, you know, with the hypercalcemia, we start to see the internal organs shut down, that kind of thing. So this means that after only a few days of baiting, then the rodent continues to lethal dose, and as it as it becomes lethargic, then it will start to shut down. It will stop to move around, and, and the hypercalcemia will take effect. Um, so it is important that we, with a product with a stop feeding effect, then it's important that you know a, a thorough survey is done, and then the the right level of bait is, is is put in place. It is left in place to make sure that there's enough feeding stations and enough feeding locations for the rodents to consume a, a, a lethal dose. This is not a one feed kill product, so they will have to consume it a couple of times. You know, there will be multiple feeding. But when we've got to that lethal dose, then we will start to shut, shut the rodent down and stop the gnawing effect and stop the feeding effect. So thorough survey, thorough inspection, you know, making sure that we are picking up all the treatment areas. And of course, what we have the benefits of at this moment in time is we have the Harmonix non-toxic. So if you are monitoring a site, and you want to monitor a site on a regular basis that doesn't necessarily have ongoing rodent activity, then you've got the ability to use the non-toxic product. It's exactly the same bait matrix, so you can swap from the non-toxic into the toxic product, and we're not necessarily dealing with any neophobic response because we've been able to put a very similar bait in place. That is not to say that you have to use the non-toxic product, and it doesn't mean that you have to pre-bait with the non-toxic product, but if you are used at looking for this option of pre-baiting and monitoring and then introducing a very similar product as and when you have products, then this product, the harmonic product range between the toxic and the non-toxic product gives us a real level of flexibility that, that, that we've not necessarily had before. So as I mentioned, we've got the harmonic monitoring, we've got the harmonic rodent pacing, we've got the harmonic monitoring. And this is all about this integrated pest management, but also this dynamic aspect that we can have now where we can introduce the non-toxic product, we can keep it in place for a, you know, as, as long as required. And if it's a site that you want to monitor on a routine basis, then the harmonic non-toxic is perfect for that. So, you know, what it does, it allows us to the early detection of infestation. And at that point, then we can be dynamic, we can be flexible, and we can move straight into our rodent paste product, the, the cholecalciferol product. And we can start to use that, you know, as per the label for a short period of time until we're in complete control. And remembering that we can use this product in a, a number of different areas now in a number of different locations, such as open areas, burrows, those kind of situations then we've already hopefully overcome any possibilities of neophobic response. As I say, it's not essential. You can use one without the other, one with the other, one in, in conjunction, in tandem or not. It won't affect the palatability of the product, but it may just help the pickup of, 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 of the product by the rodents that you're working with. And it also allows you a flexibility to be able to use a non-toxic monitor that's incredibly palatable that allows you to keep uh, to learn a level of knowledge about the sites that you're working on that you wouldn't necessarily have if you weren't able to to use uh, you know to use a, a non-toxic monitor on a regular basis. And then, of course, at the end of a the treatment, then it's very easy just to slip back into the non-toxic Harmonix products. As I say, they're both 20 gram sachets. They both have the same paint matrix. 
they both make it a very efficient way of, of, of treating and monitoring rodent activity and also making sure that you know this is a rodenticide you know so okay it's not an anticoagulant but it is a rodenticide so you'll have the same requirements on the label regarding searching for dead bodies doing surveys you know meeting the requirements of the crew code so it is important that we treat it with the same respect as we would any other identicide. And that means that it, you, we really talk about, you know, sharp, efficient treatments and then removing the, 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 the redenticide product and where required or where, where applicable, moving back into a non-toxic product. If, if, if that's a suitable way to monitor the areas that you're working with, you know, makes it very easy with this product because we've got the same bait metrics across the two formulations. So just to kind of wind that up and then answer some questions if you've got some. So, you know, some of the key some of the key things to take away about this product are that we've got this performance in all areas. So you know, we've got a wide for a product that has no known resistance and is a product that is a, a very useful resistant management tool. We have a really nice label allowance for the different locations and the different situations where we're able to apply this product and, and take the product to the target species, which I think is important, you know, from a from a management and control point of view. Then it's it's always really, really handy and really, really efficient if possible to, to treat the rodents of source where we can. With the stop feeding effect, then we've got the ability to, to, to potentially reduce the amount of redensified it actually takes to complete a rodent treatment. And if you go to the Bayer website and, 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 and look at the Harmonix um, information pages, uh, and there's a QR code to, 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 we'll take you directly to that at the end of the presentation, then what you can do with that is you can understand with the data that we have there, how you can reduce the amount of redensified that you are using if you compare it to other products, so we've got some really nice data there. So you know, it, it, this isn't just uh, this isn't just a conversation. We really have got some data where you can go in and, and, and have a look at the at the information that we've gathered and the trials that we've done. Responsibility runs all the way through this product, be it from the production of, of, of the packaging to the development of the formulation that can be used in conjunction with the non-toxic product, all the way down to you know the amount of product that will you need necessarily need to. To, to use to, to control the infestation because of the stock feeding effect, then you know we think that we you know, it, it, the responsibility of, for this product is it, it, Bayer is very very pleased with with, with the environmental impacts certainly from a packaging point of view and and the story that that brings with this particular product. We think it's a strong product to to use with customers and a strong story about you know the way that the development just doesn't stop with the product it also you know, it's around the packaging and, and everything that we provide associated with the product and then of course this dynamic integrated pest management so we've got the ability to swap in and swap out of, 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 of practically identical formulations one just has the active ingredients in and one doesn't so that's a lovely way to, to to be able to monitor it's a lovely way to explain to the end user customer about the way that we're using very very similar products because of the benefits that they can bring and and the abilities that that, that they bring from a a monitoring point of view and the way that that fits so well with the requirements of the label and the requirements of the likes of the crew code it becomes a very easy way it comes a, a very efficient way of, of, of being able to meet our requirements regarding the way that we monitor and the way that we control rodents on a regular basis so that's kind of it in a nutshell to be perfectly honest so the product's not here just yet it will be with us very very soon it'll and it'll be you know available via distributors you know Kilgem, baratine so those are our key distributors on this particular product so please work with your distributors speak to them uh, and and you know we'll make everybody aware when the product's available, as will your distribution supporters as well. So any questions? Happy to take those now. Um, if you do want more information, so the the, the product itself comes with a, a, an interactive booklet that that takes you into every aspect of the product. This QR code will take you directly to the Bayer website and directly to the uh, to the product to the product information but that has been developed specifically for this product. So by all means, it's, it's available via the Bayer website if you, if you can't take the QR code, but this will take you directly into the information. And I noticed during the break, the QR code was rolling through the BPCA pages as well. So you know, please do that. And if you need any further information, then don't hesitate to contact the Bayer team as usual. Fabulous. Thank you, Richard. I mean, if, you, if you wanted to, so you said that code's available, that QR code, they can scan it in other areas. And I think most people are familiar with QR codes these days, yeah. aren't they? 
Hey, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The great, so they are handy. Yeah, yeah but whether you like it or not, they're here. So we like yeah. that. <laughs> Fabulous, good stuff. Yeah, we got we got a got a fair few questions in there. Twenty two, I think, of them. So some of them might be the same. So let's um, start with uh, so coli calciferol. Um, what effects does it have on on target species? On non target species, well, you've got primary and secondary poisoning to be considered. So, from a primary poisoning point of view, um, then treat this product as you would any other adenticide. So, it will have an impact on, ta- on non target species if they get access to it. Um, because it's a vitamin and because it's processed by the body, then from an, uh, you know, a secondary poisoning point of view, there are benefits. And of course, there are benefits because we're not necessarily using as much of this product. So, mm-hmm. but what I would say is always a deal with the label. And of course, the label from from regarding searching for dead bodies, things like that, then the label will be very, very similar to a, a, a label that you associate with an anticoagulant. So you'll still have to do that searching for dead bodies. All those responsibilities will still be there. But from a primary poisoning point of view, then yes, treat it as you would any other identicide and protect it in exactly the same way. Great. Um, there's a few questions regarding other similar products that are out on, on out there, colecalciferol. Um, I mean, yeah, is there any, are there any differences or similarities? What's your view on that? Well, it's the same active ingredient and it's the same percentage of active ingredient. So then, you know, it, it, the, the, the different formulations, um, this is, always is a soft block paste formulation. So kind of what we perhaps call a tea bag formulation and the non-toxic products is exactly the same formulation as well so you know there's there's a benefit of having the two products alongside each other being able to swap in and out of the toxic and non-toxic as i say it's not essential you know you do you, it's a palatable product so you can lead you can lead straight in with the toxic product mm. if you wish but if you want to do some monitoring and just swap in and out and then you know it's really have a look at the label and look at the areas where the you know where you can use the Bayer product. You know that it's a, it has got a wide label allowance on it that I think will benefit professional pest controllers. So you know please take a look at the label, have a look at the the data and the information that we have to support it, and you know understand the 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 the, the abilities and the limitations of of the Bayer product and where and where it's applicable for use. So, you know, it, it, you, that, that will be important, I think, for professional pest controllers. It's, we always, uh, I always like to give professional pest controllers the ability to use the products they need in the locations that they need to use them. And I think this product allows us to do that. And I think that's important. For, and mm-hmm. I think professional pest controllers will see that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Thornston here is asking, when will barabating be on the label, if, if at all? Burabating is on the label. It is on the label, yeah. It's on the label. So what I've spoken about there regarding the areas of use, they are all on the label. So that is applicable to the label. So open areas, waste dumps, covered baiting points and burrows will be on the label. You've just not got the label yet because we're still waiting for it. So, but it, hopefully it will be with us in a few weeks. Great. I've got a quite a, quite a, um, a specific question here and um, uh, from, from Derek. So how much of Harmonix is a lethal dose to one rat? So you'd probably be looking uh, about between 10, 15 grams, something like that, of, of the bait formulation. But mm-hmm. you know, it's we we can take that conversation offline if you want more information about LD50, things like that, and you want to get really technical on it. But yeah, you'd be looking at that kind of uh, that mm-hmm. kind of, of level. So it's certainly not a one feed kill. I think that's the, the main point from that is to get across that you wouldn't necessarily class it as a one feed kill as you would with some of the anticoagulants. So, you know, there will probably need to be more than one feed, multiple feeds. But what you will get is that stop feeding effect after, you know, 24, 48 hours of feeding. And then you'll see, see the, the feeding, the, cons- the, cons- the consumption dropping off at that point. But if you were using another active ingredient, um, then that, that consumption wouldn't drop off for a few more days yet. So, you know, you probably get to the same point where the rodents die at the same period of time. So probably after about seven days, typically, if you look at the lab trials that we've got. Mm. But you'll find out that, you know, with with a, with a, an anticoagulant product, the rodents will still be feeding a couple, a couple of days after they'll be taking the, um, the colocalciferol product. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Um... So oh, you mentioned about uh, sewer treatments. That's on the label as well, isn't it? Someone's asked about sewer treatments. No, we've not got sewer treatments on. And it's a soft block anyway, so I'd, it probably would. It's not really the right formulations for sewer. So you won't get – You, I think there's probably better products to be used in that location than, than a soft block such as this one. So, uh, no, that won't be on the label. No. 
good stuff. Um, so, uh, Derek, here again. How effective is Harmonix Pace Bait on house mice? A uh, similar product appears to be relatively unattractive to them in his experience. Well, this is a soft block formulation. We've got trials against rats and we've got trials against mice. So we've got lab trials and we've got field trials as well. Um, they both work very, very well, but we do know that in a number of situations, mice are particularly difficult to work with, be that bait shyness, be that trap shyness, be that box shyness. So the ten the technically there's an awful lot that goes on with mice that, that, that makes their treatment quite complicated. Mm -hmm. But this is a highly palatable soft block formulation. Um, and you know the non-toxic formulations out there already. So it would be a, you know, the work that we've done with mice has been very very good, but I don't think that's ever a guarantee with any mice because we've all we've all worked in city centres where mice just don't do what they're supposed to do anymore and they don't feed on what they're supposed to. So mm -hmm. I think in most cases it's going to be a really effective problem. The the, the 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 resistance issue or the lack of a resistance issue with this product remains the same whether it's rats or mice. So it's still going to be effective for those, you know, those mice. And, you know, that's really uncharted about how, what the resistance levels to, you know, to, to some anticoagulants are in, in mouse activity. They're mm. probably quite wide, but we've just not got the data to prove that, to be perfectly honest. So it's a good option and it's a palatable option, but will it work in 100% of mouse infestations? Probably not, but what will? So, you know, but what I would say is that we've done a lot of work with it. If you want our support with it, if you want us to come site and have a look and, and share our knowledge about it, then I'll, as always, for the professional pest control industry, all they have to do is ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's another one here regarding um, efficacy data. So um, this is that you, know, you didn't show any of that on there, but does Harmonix allow for speed baiting? That's allowing control in seven days. Um, is that I, I, speed baiting? I, I don't... You, I'd be very careful about saying that we can control something in seven days with any product, to be perfectly honest. So I, I think we have to be a little bit more flexible than that. I think if you get in the right place against the target species and they take it straight away, then seven days is a possibility. But, you know, we, we have to accept that infestations are complex. So, you know, I'm a, what, you, it, it, you get the stop feeding effects and, you know, after a couple of days and they will die a couple of days after that. But is that logical for every infestation? And would I put my hand up and say, yeah, seven days is a is a comfortable time frame for any infestation? I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest. We know it's highly palatable. We know that it works in a number of key scenarios. And we also know that with the stop feeding effect, then that can be beneficial to the, to the application of rodenticide. Uh, if we're lucky, seven days. But, you know, I would say that, you know, it, it, it completely depends on the infestation that you're walking into and looking at, to be perfectly honest. And so that comes down to the point that we have made throughout the presentation, survey by a professional pest controller. And we know that the professional pest controllers out there really know what they're doing. So it's that depth of survey and getting the bait in the right location. So you know, and we're happy to support with that, as I've already said, you know, we're happy to come out and we're happy to have a look around and, and, and give the benefits of our experience with that. Great, good stuff. I mean, if in the chat section you can put where to contact you guys, if anyone's got any more questions, that would be great. I've still got a couple more here. I haven't finished with that, but just as a, a side note, someone's asked uh, Paul here about uh, do they have to do uh, another online training for this new product or will no. they? No, so we, we, we've got a, a, a proactive brochure and a proactive guidance document that the QR code will take you to or the Bayer website will take you to. So, mm -hmm. so we, we don't see that we won't be introducing a, 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 an online test with this particular product, no. Great. Right. And when, when is it roughly going to be available? Someone's asked that. I know it's you're yeah. not quite sure well, yet. Or... As, as soon as possible, hopefully. So we're just laying out uh, a couple of issues regarding uh, with just some uh, updates from HSE and then you know, we'll have access to the products at that point. So we have access to the product. We're just waiting for um, a bit further information from a red point of view and then it, it'll be available. So, but the, the, the you know the product is, is the, there's no issue with access to the product. It's just when we we're given the green light to put it on the market and put it into distribution. So, you know, we're, we're hoping that won't be a long time frame now. Mm, good stuff. Um, I know that it, I mean generally across the whole of the the world, not just the UK, but you know environmental concerns and recycling and things like that are a, a big thing everyone's considering. And, and Graham asks here: Is the package recyclable? Do you know? Well, the problem you have is whenever you talk about waste 
package in from a redensite point of view, then you've got to take it down your hazardous waste chain unless you can show that it, and I, I don't have to tell you about the complexity. Yeah. Of that. <laughs> I'm sure you're working on that code of practice right now. Um, so, you know, you, you'd have to, you know, work with your waste contractor, meet the label requirements and, you know, having worked with, you know, waste redensite and waste package in the past, then it, it's not that simple as is it recyclable or isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. All, it all comes down to it's been to contact with the redensite, side, that kind of thing. And I'm putting that back out of my memory because it's a while since I've worked with that, <laughs> to be honest. So you, can, you might be able to answer that better than I can now, but yeah. it, it, it's not about whether it's recyclable, it's whether it has to go down a specific waste chain. Um, yeah, I suppose it depends how that how your product is presented within that outer packaging and whether it is contaminating it or or, or not. So, yeah, yeah so, label that. So, you know, it, probably down a hazardous waste chain, I would suggest. But, you know, it, it, that speak to BPCA for guidance on, on that. But, you know, definitely, um, you know, as with general packaging, you'd probably suggest it goes down hazardous waste chain, but at least, you know, the actual developments of the bag is, you know, it, there's, there's 80% less plastic in that than there would be the standard tub um, that, you, may, you know, that, that goes down your traditional waste chain right now. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Well, I think that brings us close, Richard. We have got quite a few questions in there. Um, I think there, there are a lot of questions similar to other questions. So um, I've sort of gone through those and just made sure, but there are some new ones in there. If you could do the same, just go in there and have a little type of some answers and interact with people. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Fabulous. Great. Thank you, Richard, again, as always. Great yeah. to see you. Yeah, you too. Nice Take to see you. care. Bye-bye.